What's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you exactly how to get a huge ginormous back. Um, I, it's gonna look, by the time you're done watching this, it's gonna look exactly like Ronnie Coleman's. All right, it really won't, uh, but it'll look close to his if you do this exact workout and if you have the exact same parents that he did. Um, if you don't meet those qualifications, you might have a slightly different outcome. Uh, but in all seriousness, I'm gonna give you a full back workout today. This would be a good back workout if you're really trying to hit every part of your back. I know a lot of people are like, am I hitting all the parts? This one will hit all the parts. We'll go through a little bit of breakdown. We have things a little bit more focused on lats, a little bit more focused on upper back, a little bit more focused on thickness, meaning kind of a record type stuff. I'm here with IFBB Pro Mel. I don't know your last name. That's Brodsky. your question. What is it? Brodsky. Brodsky. There we go. That's the toughest question I'm going to ask her today because she's in prep. So all of her glucose can't go to brain function. Oh, has to go. To, it. Yeah, it has yeah. to go to muscle function. So we're going we're gonna to prioritize. Don't think too much if you want to be huge because your brain uses a lot of glycogen. I don't remember what the amount is, it's, it's a good bit. But if you don't wanna waste it up there on something stupid like your brain, then don't think as much and it'll go more to your muscles. I'd rather think it off. Yeah, and that's, that's, a, that's the best way to grow. Don't think, just grow. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're gonna take you through a workout today um, and we'll do the most important stuff, pay attention to how she's doing things. Hopefully I'm gonna give her some cues and tips that will help her, that hopefully will help you. Um, focus on hopefully the intensity that she's using. Um, and then for all you nerds that get fixated on the numbers of what, how many sets, how many reps, I'll just say that at the end as well too, but I'm just gonna let you know that's probably the least important thing you could think about with your workout because if that was the easy part, everybody could read the perfect workout and everybody would look awesome. It's much more about what you do, excuse me, it's much more about how you do things, not the what of what you're doing things. So anyway, let's get at it. So per the usual, um, I'm just going to have you go through um, you doing your thing first. Um, you know, and if like while you're going, I cue you on some stuff, I'll cue you on some stuff. Um, but if anything, kind of move towards on all your warm-ups, same as other body parts, a little bit slower maybe than you would normally go. And uh, we'll probably, if anything, do a little bit less reps per set. Where it's again, I'll probably have you doing some more warm-up sets than you might typically do. I'm going to have you doing a little bit less reps so we're still not, you know, fatiguing you too much. And as you come to the top, don't let your spine move a whole lot. Sorry if I have cold hands. Just let this elevate, and when that stops, just stop. I'm not saying like the rotation's bad, but for right now, let's just keep your spine still. Yep, and then pull down. Yeah, that'll look good. This nice and still. And then really focus on letting that stretch. Scapular reach that way, and then pull down. Two more. Stretch, 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 stretch. And then try and initiate right from there. And for all your sets, if there's a part where I really want you to take your time is that finish. Just focus on letting that reach this way as far as it goes, and then initial pull down from there. Yeah. Then as we get through and use some heavier weight and stuff, you can always get more aggressive. But that last part, every single one, that's what I want you to focus on. Get that full stretch. And hopefully that gives you a pretty good sensation. Then really initiate from where you feel it. So mm -hmm. stretch and then hard pull. One more. Good. Nice. So why that stretch feels different than it does. Probably get a little bit more just because of how much I'm cueing you to go, like really let it go. Because a lot of people, like if you, it's the same as anything, like it's just a weird, it's such a, it's, there's so many joints that the lat crosses over, it's a weird thing to focus on as opposed to the bicep. Like just imagine if you were stretching your bicep and you couldn't really see what's going on you have this notion like I have to keep it tight because I'm using it. So with your lat, because other stuff could like basically finish the motion, you could just completely relax it, but you would still be able to not just like have your arm rip out of your socket, right? Whereas if your bicep, if you keep completely relaxed, it's just gonna go like that. So as you're, as you're letting it out, because you might just be keeping your lat like kind of tight the whole time how you were doing it before, you might not have been allowing for that last little bit of length. Or if I did, I wasn't still, I didn't still have tension. Yeah, focusing where you want it. Yeah, and so that's a trick. Like one, um, I did a we did a video the other day, which will be up. But it's something I saw from Tom Purvis, where he does a cool thing where he basically attaches a um, a measuring tape, you know, to where the kind of you visualize where the lower insertion would be of your lats on your hips, and then where it actually have it or origin and the insertion on the upper arm, and shows how much just with GH joint motion, so just with how much your humerus can move in the side of your scapula, you know, let's say it's you know moves five inches, so you have five inch length change of the lat, and then if you actually finish with how much you can elevate. 
it's like almost the same amount of length change. So it's like you get half the range of motion from your lat comes from just the GH joint, and the other half comes from elevating the scapula, elevation, protraction, you know, kind of the combination. And so really, if obviously everyone's talking about in the whole muscle building world now how much like length and stuff is important, which for the most part I agree, if you don't ever let your scapula like elevate and protract a little bit more or fully, like you're missing like literally half of your lat's range of motion. Everyone just looks at the upper arm, and yeah, that's responsible for a lot, but the, the like the half of the range of motion can come from scapula. So, and then the little stuff as well too. Like I, I adjusted your position just a teeny bit, whereas like because you have like a little bit of an arch in your back, which is fine. Which if you're forward just a little bit, like I feel like it's going in like pure elevation. Like you, you're not going to get quite as much lat length change as if you kind of stop where it's a little bit more comfy on your shoulder joint, and then really finishing the motion with it not pure elevation, a little bit of protraction, um, and that can make a difference as well then too. And then some of it, honestly, it's where it's like. People talk a little bit about like tactile cueing and all that touching and stuff. And it's not like magical, but I think it's not a bad thing for like back. Cause even if like you realize like if, you know, me literally touching just below your scapula will really help you be like, okay, this is the stuff that I'm using. Because again, you have so much stuff, you know, that can literally extend your upper arm that it's like not, it's, you could use your teres, you could use your rear delts, you could use a lot of stuff. So if it's really like, oh, I'm really trying to make sure I'm using the stuff that's down here, then I think that, you know, can be a helpful thing. Is it like touching? Yeah. yeah no. And generally like little stuff too, where it's like, when I'm, when I'm not just like, not that there's, I don't think there's anything that's definitively better, but like, it's like, you know, some people like tap and things like that, but like, I'm, I'm going like this. So it's like one, like that's the way, like in line with the fibers. Like when I touch like that is one. So this is where you want to feel lengthened and then kind of moving in the same direction that they're contracting. So it's like, even though it's a subtle difference, like the difference of like tapping something or actually like helping you sense like this is what's see, actually see happening moving, and moving. Yeah. yeah. And moving in the plane that they move. And I think can help as well too. Last one, keep it smooth. Stretch, stretch. Nice. Really good. The other little thing that might help there too is, you know, I always get questions about like, people like, well, how much should I do this? And how much should I do that? And all that kind of stuff. And obviously the lat crosses over all that. So it absolutely does change things, you know, so all our things being the same, like this would make the lat a little longer, you know, this would make it a little bit shorter. But I think most people, like it's just fix, pick somewhere that's kind of neutral-ish and just work on getting good at that first. So that's even that subtle thing where I did at the end is like if you're trying to stretch your lat and maybe before you were getting all this, you were starting to do some of this, it's like that might take away from it a little bit as well too, you know, so it's like, I always say it's like, I don't ever say like, there's some point where it's excessive. Like you'll have somebody that doesn't really have a good, you know, not good at feeling their lats and their whole motion is just like, they have like a whole side bendy thing. It's like, find your lats first without using other stuff that could possibly do that motion as well. Um, so for most people, keep your ribs still, keep your spine still to start and really let, you know, the upper arm move, let that scapula move around your ribs a lot and then keep everything else fixed. Cause it's just less variables that way. And then if like, if someone's really good with using their lats, then I'm like, well, that's kind of an extra, Thing you can play around with, right? So if you've got this and then you want to mess with like, oh, do I get a little extra length with this kind of rotation side bend? You probably could. Or do I get a little extra contraction, you know, with that to finish? Then maybe you could. But for most people, and again, if most people watching this trying to get better lats, it's like you guys should probably not do too much of this stuff. Just get good at your lats first. And so for you, like with all the things where you're like, oh, things feel pretty good. It's probably just like a combination of multiple things where it's like, you know, adjusting your pace here, your positioning, you know, that stretch, lean back a little bit, like all those little things will just, you know, make that much a difference for sensation that'll matter for someone like you. So I'm gonna have you one little fun extended set. So let's take obviously a rest before we go here again. But I'm just gonna have you go both arms at the same time. And if anything, I'm gonna have you focus on this. The range of motion can be a little bit shorter. So I'm not gonna have you worry so much about getting, you know, kind of all the way back at your side. So honestly, just kind of think about a good cue is your upper arm kind of coming into like the front of your lat, you know, so the part you can see. So right about when you're getting there, just kind of call that the end of the range of motion. All right. And if, the whole reason for that is, you know, going one at a time, we can really stay in a path where you can kind of comfortably move like this. So putting together, even with a slightly wider here, you know, makes that part a little bit tougher. So we'll just focus on the stretch anyway. And the only other thing I'll have you focus on 
while you're doing this is even keeping your elbows in a little bit more, which again, not really about your elbows, more about that arm path. But even if you, if you just relax here or go pulled in here, you should feel that actually stretches your lats a little bit, keep a little bit more tension there. So we're just gonna do a straight set to start both arms at the same time. So exact same focus on everything, really have that nice stretch, elevation to finish, pull down from the lats, tuck right into the side. And then when you're done, so let's say you do eight reps, 10 reps, whatever, I'm gonna have you stand up like this, keep your hands on the handles, don't take them off. And even when you're here to keep that stretch, keep your elbows kind of pushed together. So I'm gonna count here for like 10, 15 seconds. While you're staying here, I'm gonna take a plate off each side and then you're gonna go again. Okay. Got it? Should feel a little different. Yeah. Yep. Pull down. Oh, fuck. Yep. Right there. Good. Don't go past that. Stretch. I should feel that a lot more. Right there. And down. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Right there. Mm -hmm. And as you come from the top, visualize not leaning it forward. So you don't want your back to come off my hand. Stay lean back a little more, a little more. There we go. Good, so this stays still, doesn't rock forward. Mm -hmm. Stretch. Right from there. All right, squeeze. Yep. Yeah. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Beautiful right there, nice. Down, all right, let's squeeze. Good, one more. Don't worry about the range, just have that nice stretch. Right from there. Down, 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 down. Right there, good. Stand up with it, keep your hands on, keep those tucked in. Feel like you're trying to smush my hands, there we go. And we're gonna hold that about 10 seconds. Long 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Back in. Don't worry about getting a ton of reps, just keep them pretty. Really just want that stretch. Yep, if we lose a little at the bottom, that's fine. Just keep that stretch up. Mm -hmm. Pull down. Yep. One more. Nice job. So that's the fun, um, you know, one, obviously I'm sure you could feel it, is that kind of forced arm path is a little bit of additional stretch you'll have the whole time. Um, focusing on the range of motion, because obviously we already got all the way kind of a pretty fully short lat to start with, so I don't really care about that range of motion. And so obviously that's kind of almost like a rest pause with like kind of like a little, like occluded effect probably from the stretch there as well too. Um, so obviously we're accumulating a lot of stuff in that stretch, 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 length and position. And then like, I'm sure you could feel it too, keeping your elbows forced in, in between, you could just feel stuff like, there's no relax, it's staying completely tight. That's why I get an occluded effect because you got all that byproduct from contraptions basically trapped in there. And so that's why that's extremely painful when you're just sitting there. And then obviously doing a drop just so we can accumulate a few more reps. Um, so just anecdotally something I like to do for a little extended set, but also gets like a ridiculous lat pump. There's like a few things that get a lat pump like that I found. So you guys want a lat pump at home, that's, that's the ticket. I could hear stuff like in my, yeah. Up in there, like cracking and popping. Yeah, I screaming and crying. Stretch. I mean, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Because that's where, like, I've been having a hard time feeling like I can open up all the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. training, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So if you missed it, I've drawn on Mel before. We did it for a delt workout. And she let me draw on her again for your guy's benefit. She sacrificed her body for your body. Um, so let's keep anatomy really, really simple. So this is to give you a little bit of a visual. You know, you don't have to have someone, you know, touch or cue you the way that I was but just a really easy breakdown of what can extend your upper arm, which means move your upper arm this way, which is something your lat can do. Um, and what is the only muscle that can actually pull your entire shoulder girdle down, meaning move your scapula. And now how that can be a great thing for differentiating what you're training. So I've just given a rough idea, nerds take it easy, of what your rear delt is and where your teres is, which some people call the little lat because it runs in very, very similar direction is kind of your upper lat fibers. But the difference of these two only attach to the scapula. So that means they can only move the upper arm to the scapula, right? So this part of your arm towards, again, your shoulder blade right here. These muscles cannot pull your shoulder blade down in space. 
Now your lat can extend your upper arm, so do the exact same thing, move your upper arm this way. At the same time, it can also, because it pulls on your upper arm, and because some people's lat might attach the scapula, it can pull everything down. So when I was cueing her, whether you think about this visually or have someone like cue you, I'm not touching up here, I'm not touching here, because that might just help her use this stuff. I want her to make sure she's using lat. So when she pulls down, I want her to visualize pulling down from here. So Mel will actually pull down for me a little bit. And so you'll see the only things that can pull all of this down is gonna be kind of that lower lat stuff. You could have a little bit of lower trap as well too, but you can see these fibers generally kind of run that way. And it's more, yeah, there's a little bit of depression, but it's always kind of, always kind of combined with depression and retraction where this is more of a pure depression towards the origin of those lower lat fibers. So just a visual for you guys to help, a visual hopefully you guys to help see of why I'm cueing kind of touching down here. And for you guys at home, even if you don't have somebody that can kind of appropriately touch or cue you, is you could just visualize all of this stuff pulling and keeping that kind of your mind muscle connection-y type thing when you're pulling down to make sure you're using more of this stuff and less of this stuff. So we'll see how this setup goes here. But basically, um, the big thing I wanna focus with this on more than any other pullover is one, it's nice that you know this will help keep everything nice and still as opposed to standing. But when you're coming to the top is because it's pulling this way, whereas if most people doing like a pullover like um, you know, whether it was a dumbbell or if you were doing a cable with it more this direction, you're not really loading that depression. So again, here you can do the same type of focuses, really let stuff elevate and then really pull down first and then just continue that pull down till wherever. And again, whatever you want to do for elbow bend, I mean, if you like it a little bit straighter with just a soft bend, that's fine as well too. But the main focus is really finish the motion with that elevation, initiate with that lat kind of pull down and then just continue to contract the lat until it's right at the side. And this, I mean, again, you can mess around where there's a comfortable finish. I mean, we can take it pretty far, but if we're starting to lose it again, I really want more like this range of motion through the stretch is really kind of the part we want to emphasize more than anything. Maybe one higher. And same thing when you're reaching, just once you get here, don't feel like it's too much overhead, just more right that direction and then down slow, right? So don't quite bring your arm all the way overhead. Go, just one or two more. And as you're at the top here, same thing, focus on elbows in just a little bit. You'll just find that will keep a little bit more stretch as opposed to letting them dump out. Same thing. This stays tight. Focus on this part nice and slow. Elevation there. Pull from there, yep. You know, as we get working ish, obviously when we're doing some slightly different stuff, obviously I'm not going to push you too much like past form failure, but on this, when you actually get to the point where it's like, you'll always be able to probably depress and pull from here. And then as you start to get to the point where you feel like you can't quite finish it, I'll just actually have you like make that arm bend a little bit more dramatic and kind of extend the set by making it kind of just like a pull down. So you'll still go every rep where you're finished with like, so again, your first couple reps might look like stretch, you know, pull to here. And then maybe by like whatever, five, six reps, you're like, ah, I can't do it. Then just bend the elbow and finish with more of like a pull down type motion. And then when you come to the top, top will be exactly the same. Let the elbows out, stretch, elevate, hard pull down, and then you'll just finish bending the elbow and do a couple reps like that. It's a really smooth and easy way to extend the set just by pulling that line of force closer to your shoulder joint. Really good, one more. Nice job. Gotcha, yep. Like, because obviously, if you're like again knowing that fully stretched lat is always going to be a component of elevation and protraction, and again, I always think that's the best way to do is train that stuff. You want some stuff that's always good to do as well, too. Is like you could always, like, and we can do a little bit if you want to mess around with it at the end of the day, um, but even just doing some you know stuff that's supposed to be isolated more like serratus, just actually loading protraction, so literally just doing like the you know push up plus. You ever seen like those ones where it's like basically just you could actually do a whole push-up if you want. People say it's like the integrate or whatever bullshit, but as you go to finish, you know, push into a protraction. But I think that it pairs great on a day when you're, everything's pulling you into protraction now. You're not really actively taking yourself there. So all the load is pulling you there. You're just letting all the muscles on this side go there. But so then if you pair a little bit at the end, just actually training, you know, that protraction, the muscles that are actually responsible for protraction, like that's, in my opinion, probably the best way to pick up range of motion and keep it. Because that's a big thing like people is like people do all sorts of shit to like how, like everybody and their moms obviously wants to how do I open up more? How do I open up more? Every single class all the way up. And they'll go to guys, they're like, I'm gonna wail on this and I'm gonna wail on that with soft tissue stuff. And I'm not saying that's bad, but then it's like, well, why do I have to constantly get that wailed on 
like most people never train protraction. This is very valid. I was, I was, I've been on to this. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get there. Yeah. But just in the past couple weeks, I started training chest again. Yeah. For that exact reason. Yeah. But that's another great right. way to get protraction. Yeah. Well, that's the, because then you can train protraction without necessarily having to get bigger pecs. Because that's a good part, actually, too. If you fully shorten your pec, it's a great way because your pecs can protract. So they can obviously adduct. But if you really technically keep pulling apart, your shoulder blade is going to protract. But like there's a little bit of a difference because you know pecs can do this, whereas like serratus can do this. So again, like it's two separate things. So actually, in reality, it'd probably be best to train both because your serratus really can't do this too much. It can't actually pull not just forward, but actually kind of more around, whereas serratus can go straight forward. But if you think about pec, as you go from here, like at this point, if the pec contracts, it would pull everything this way. Whereas if you go into pure protraction, that pretty much has to come more from serratus. So you get some of it from chest for sure. So if I'm on, like I just did like a pin loaded, pronated chest press mm -hmm. and then flies. If I'm doing press, I'm actually going here. I think the flies are the best place to go there. Yeah. yeah, with presses it's a little bit, like you wanna do it with flies, like do it with a cable because it's gonna just let you go. And because you're not doing it heavy, do it without something with your back on it. Like not that it's gonna limit it too much with your back on a back pad, but if you wanted to like literally, hey, I want to do this, I would if I were you because you don't want necessarily a huge chest. Is like at the end, well, if you do physique, you might want a bigger chest. But it's still not like a huge body part, obviously, yeah, relative to, yeah. So honestly, what do you do is I would do if I were you at the end of a back day, you just do literally like one or two sets. So you could literally do like on the ground, you could do some push up, the exact same thing I just showed you on the ground, and then do a set of cables where it's just like you're doing cables and you're like, you might have, depending on how much mobility is, you could do one at a time, because obviously how far across, you know, so they don't bang into each other, but you could just take a cable and just literally do a couple sets of how far across can I bring it, you know, and then do the other side, how far across can I bring it. So I'm not gonna key a ton on this. I love this machine, and I think it's just probably one of the best for lats and upper back, as opposed to not, I don't think we're necessarily really need, just because of your traps that you already have, which are great. Don't need too much stuff spent out here, I don't think. Like if I was gonna be efficient with your programming, I'd probably just put in maybe one row and have it more here-ish. So this way you're getting some lat, keeping that arm path, but you can just get just as much upper back pretty much by just allowing your scapula. So all I'm really gonna have you focus on here is even though we're gonna get some lat for sure, is focus more on your shoulder blades. So when you're going through the motion, just really like as you're coming out, same thing, keeping the spine still. So I don't want you draping over the pad, not that that's always bad, but just for a day really protract. So let the shoulder blades go as far forward as they can. Try and feel like you're, everything's kind of moving at once, but really focus on retraction first, and then just how far can you squeeze it back to the finish. Why are we going past the spine? Because I'm a little bit more concerned for upper back on this. So if you, one, I mean, I'm fine. One, we'll get a little extra rear delt. So I mean, the only thing that can really go past as far as your upper arm concerned really is rear delt. Maybe Terry's a little bit. But if your upper arm goes further past, further back, you can probably retract your shoulder blades a little bit further. Um, whereas we're gonna still get some pretty good lat from here to here, and then just that last little bit, we'll probably do a little bit of a handoff where it's not lats finishing, it's more upper back stuff finishing. If I did have somebody that was like, I just want as much lat as possible, I'd probably have you stop more, you know, kind of when your upper arm's right at your side. But this is kind of a little bit of everything. Now the visual here is all of this pulling together. So we don't really care what's doing it, but literally just visualize bunching all that stuff up. Yeah, and then the same thing, just visualize all that open, 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 perfect. Yep, that's great. Same thing, both sides, open, 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 open. And all together, shoulder to shoulder, squeeze all the stuff. Yeah, that's great, really good. Honestly, it'd be one of those things, same as anything, it's good that you're thinking now but like kind of, a, you know, some of the stuff that I'm saying that might be helpful or not helpful or whatever, but like that's with like upper back stuff. I mean, I can see we got everything working and that's like the more simple things you can think about sometimes or find whatever cues, cause that's the whole thing with cues is, you know, it's supposed to have something internally happen for you to have like a good external result. So that means they could be like, some cue could be amazing for somebody and be horrible for someone else. So it's like, we don't get too fixated on the cues. But like always for me, like one of the ones is just literally, I kind of just visualize my whole back, just like, again, open is kind of what I think. So it's that combination of, you know, protract, you know, kind of there's going to be some degrees of everything else, but just opening everything up and then not getting too overthinking from there. It's just how far can I just shoulder to shoulder, pull it all together 
and we're just going to get stuff doing it. If, whatever helps you focus, I think, really on how much can you actually get your scapula, your shoulder blades moving. Like whatever cue helps with that is really what we're trying to focus on because everything else is just going to like, we're going to get what we get of extra stuff. Again, the rear delt's going to work no matter what. We're going to get some lats at some point no matter what. But if we really want all that upper back stuff, it's really about how much can we get your shoulder blades moving. Really good. Same thing and all that visual, all that stretch open, all that stretch open, all that stretch open, all of it shoulder to shoulder, pulling together. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Squeeze, squeeze. Nice. And this one is I'm going to have you pause at the end. So, like, we'll do like, let's say, five, six reps. I'm going to have you pause. I'm going to take a plate off and then just keep going. So, another rep or two take a plate off and all. So basically just an extended set, but I want you to pause in that stretch when I take the weight off. And then at each one, we're probably not going to do a whole lot of reps. Okay. You know what I mean? But it's just the whole time again, it's just a little bit more time there too, even in the switch. Good. Maybe pause in the stretch. Yep. All right, go ahead. Same thing. Pause in the stretch here. Open it. Go ahead. Nice job. Pause in the stretch here. Yep. All right. Nice job. Good work. Start on this because this will be the one that I'll keep a little bit more technical. And then we'll superset. Same thing when we superset, it'll take time obviously between each one. Probably just do, you know, Aside from the initial warm-up, maybe just one or two rounds of each. So just at the end. But so um, the only thing really that I'm gonna cue and then the rest will be stuff as I adjust and as we go. But um, for anybody that's wanting to use, everyone used to always call this the low back extension, but obviously realized a lot of people use it now for hip extension. So I think technically it's the extension bench. Is that what you're supposed to call it? I don't know, 45 degree extension bench. We'll call it that. You can't even call it 45 degree because if you have one like this, the amount of uh, degrees it's set at ch uh, changes. But so anyway, Complicated, more complicated with um, you know setup than this. But the simple thing to start is if you want to do for for hips, make sure you have the pad low enough so that you can clear your hips. You know, so it's actually should be a couple inches, I think, ideally below your hip crease, and that way you're not actually getting stopped. If you're trying to do it more for lower back, put the pads up higher so it actually blocks your hip crease. And so for anybody at home, when I say hip crease, bend your leg. That's your hip crease where you actually bend in there. So I literally want the pad above that. So if I'm moving it really is going to be hardly at all actually from the hip and more from the spine. So again, more from the spine if your goal is erectors, more from the hip if your goal is, you know, hamstrings and glutes. So anyway, when you're going, we'll just go the first one. I'll have you keep your hands down. Still move the microphone. I'll have you keep your hands like down just to start because eventually I'll probably have you holding the dumbbell or bar or whatever. But that I just really want you to think about rounding and extending. So you can literally have the top of your hips kind of pressed in here and not moving a whole lot. So then all the motion is literally, and I'll give you some weird reverse cues here sometimes about like as you're going down, also feel like you're kind of like pushing your lower back up because you really want as much rounding as you can get. So I'm literally just going to have you round, 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 whatever you've got. And then as you come up, same thing, I'm going to have you extend as far as you can go. So thinking about coming all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, chest up. And just to the point of where you don't want the top of your pelvis coming up because if I rock off a little bit too far, then at some point in time that motion came actually from my knees bending, you know, pulling my femur and my pelvis off. So I'll stop at the top as soon as you feel like you're going to lose contact at the top of your pelvis, but squeeze and extend, you know, the entire back. Round, 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 round. Good. Keep round. Keep round and keep round if you got it. Yeah, it's good. Pause. Is it okay that keep the feet Eventually, try and keep them pretty fixed. I mean, there's no reason. Yeah, so as long as you're keeping them there. But I don't really want a whole lot of motion from your heels going up or going down, right? So eventually, we just want everything down here locked in stone. Yeah, and then just start extending. Keep it slow, keep it slow, keep it slow. And even all the way through up here. So chest up, chest up, chest up, chest up to finish. Nice. Yeah, that's it. So same thing as you round, round, round. You can kind of visualize, yes, yeah, spine up. Kind of like almost like you're bringing your chest to the back mirror at the bottom. There we go. Whatever range you've got, take it. Please. If you set it up above your hips like we had, you really can't mess it up. You know what I mean? Because I mean, 
even the whole time you're doing that, sometimes you'll still feel glutes and hams a little bit, just because you got your ankles pressing against the pad and you're keeping your pelvis still. But all the motion will always come from the spine. So I think you really mess around with the form. I'm not even saying this would for a results standpoint, but more so just seeing what your spine has. Is you know, you can get to a point where you're like, ah, that's the end. But then if you try some of that stuff with spine, you know, towards the ceiling, you know, chest more that way, like, oh, I found some extra. And same thing when you come to the top, you can extend up and think, oh, like actually most of the extension came from here. Oh, and I still actually had some up here. And like, again, so even if, if you left off those last little, last little bits, would that like really like reduce your results that much? I don't know, probably not. But that's the only thing where from a form standpoint, as you're doing it, you can just kind of mess around with, do I really have it completely rounded at the bottom? You know, am I really completely extended at the top? So. Um, and then for honestly, rack chins, really just kind of thinking like high, uh, like kind of like a high pull down, high row, whatever you want to call it. Um, and not, not, don't have to overthink too much here. I mean, the big thing is really just thinking about, again, kind of the shoulder blades going up in this direction and then everything kind of pulling down and back. And so again, it's just the, honestly a little bit more upper back work. Um, and I like kind of just this high row position because then we're not going to be getting hopefully too much like upper traps involved. It's going to be more stuff again, not just lat that can kind of pull down, but because we have a little bit more of like a together, a little bit more of a retraction component with the pull down, it will be a little bit more like lower traps as well too. So, and then for anybody at home, why doing this? So one very, very similar. There's not like a huge difference between this and like a pull up. Um, you know, you can make it the argument on this. Maybe you're getting a little bit more kind of like mid back stuff, like mid lower traps maybe um, but so it's, it's essentially just the exact same muscles you get from like a high row so if your gym has like a high row machine again somewhere kind of between just you know more of a horizontal row and a vertical pull just kind of in between stuff and so it gets a little bit of everything for upper back um, and then it's also nice too if like you can't do pull-ups because not every person can do pull-ups or sometimes you can only do like three or four reps with your body weight and you want to do something more maybe in an eight to ten rep range this is nice too, because having your feet up will obviously offset some of that load um, a little bit. So it does two things, offset some load, but also set your torso relative to the bar more at this angle. So the plane is actually more of like a, again, that high row thing, as opposed to a purely vertical motion. So a little bit more of like a wider grip here, just set your feet up body still. And the same thing I'm trying to finish the motion with as much kind of retraction, protraction, or protraction and elevation as I can get, and then pulling that kind of down and back first, and then just wherever you go. We don't really care much about where the bar comes relative to your body. Just kind of driving elbows down and back. And then same thing when you're at the bottom, just don't like sit down, obviously just lightly touch and go. As you come into the finish, you actually feel like you're actively leaning back just a teeny bit more. Yep. And the same thing as you come into that finish, don't get too caught up on how high you come. Just obviously stop when you feel like your back stops. Because the way some people are like, I got to get higher. They start using biceps and everything else. So just focus on pulling all that back stuff down and back. Kind of go where you go. Squeeze. Perfect. And stop just short of that at the top. So don't let your leg move. Round, 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 round. Same thing. Keep them nice and slow. Good. And then from here, back, back, back. Good. Chest up, chest up, chest up. Great work. And just hold those ends for me. So at the bottom, a little pause in the stretch. Perfect. And then extend everything along the spine. Chest up, chest up, chest up, chest up. Hard squeeze. Good job. Nice. Let's go one more with the plate. I'm going to do a couple body weight. Round, 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 round. Yeah. And extend. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Nice. Gotcha. Round, 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 round. Perfect, 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 perfect. Yep. And squeeze, 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 squeeze. Now is when you're expecting it to not feel as bad, but it feels worse. Go two more. You got them. Keep that exact same pace. It just burns. Keep the form the same. Nice stretch. Good. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. squeeze. Chest up, chest up, chest up. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll take a little while to dissipate. Good, just one or two more. Make everything elevate up and forward. Nice. Squeeze. That's good. One more. Don't force the range. Stretch up and forward. Squeeze. Nice. Feet on the floor. Mm -hmm. Just a couple more right there.
All right, guys, so that wraps up the back workout. So a little bit of context here before I get into like how many sets did we do? Like why did I do certain exercises or not other exercises? She is six weeks out from her first show of the season. So I just keep that in mind. What does that mean for normal people out there? She's been in a deficit for a long period of time, probably a couple months at this point in time. Um, and her deficit's only gonna get larger and larger as her main goal now is to hold on to tissue. Um, you know, try and keep workout performance as high as she can while she's dropping body fat. So if there's this idea of what's her maximum recoverable volume, I don't want to go anywhere near that. Um, I just want enough stimulus really where, again, one, it's nice to have the feeling of I had a good workout. She wants to feel her muscles, you know, have a balance of like, we just didn't like waste the whole last hour of the workout where she's like, I didn't have any pump. I didn't feel anything. Um, you know, but at the same time have enough intensity that we're still holding on to tissue. So we probably did. She said lats were a little bit more priority. So we probably did like two working sets of the pull down, two working sets of the pullovers and most everything else. We really just kind of did some, maybe a little bit more taxing the normal warm up sets mm -hmm. and really kind of like one working set. Um, and then I would just add an extended set. So how do you get a little bit more volume in a short period of time um, at the last working set? So with the row, you know, we did a little extended set with the pause, you know, and, and a drop set. We did a little extended set in the pull down to start with that stretch and kind of the rest pause drop set. And then we did the same thing for lower back, low back extensions, same thing for, um, you know, the rack chins or rack pulls. Um, and really the idea behind that is like, you wouldn't want, if someone was doing, you know, let's say two, three, four working sets per exercise, you wouldn't want drop sets every single set. For me, it's a way again, just to get a little bit more stimulus than if we had just done that one set, but also not, you know, over fatiguing and kind of making a waste of the rest of the workout as well too. And some of that's a little bit of a balance in my opinion of kind of like the art of training, you've been training people for long enough, you know, you just kind of figure out a little bit by feeling a little bit by having some of those concepts, what works best. Um, so for everybody at home too, wanting a, a good complete back workout, this is it. Hopefully you can figure out, I try to always avoid some redundancies. You know, so the first two motions were really for lat focus. The difference between the first two as well is obviously with the second one, we're taking your bicep out of it almost completely. And then from there we went to a row that's a lot upper back, probably a little bit of lat stuff there as well too. Then we went to stuff purely for low back stuff or rector stuff. And then we kind of had a little bit of everything. That's the only thing you could argue maybe is a teeny bit of redundancy, but I think because back is so big, you can have a movement like that where you're getting a little bit of everything as well too. So it's always the thought of don't have redundancy in the workout, um, but at the same time as well too, we wanna make sure we're training everything. You know, the only thing I might have different for somebody that I would consider a more complete back workout is maybe a deadlift variation. I always thought if you wanted as thick erectors as possible, you want a combination of a deadlift variation, preferably like an RDL um, and low back extensions. She hasn't been deadlifting a whole lot. She's six weeks out. So really not worth the risk to reward benefit there. Where again, it is a complex motion. It also does involve a ton of hips. Um, and at this point in time, again, what change in her physique would it make doing any, any specific motion? Almost none, you don't need to do anything. So at this point, I would never introduce something new uh, that especially is like kind of a higher risk exercise, like a deadlift variation. But for you guys at home, if you want a little bit more rector stimulus, I would throw an RDL in there somewhere. And same as every workout, you know, her priority was more lats. If your priority was erectors, maybe do a deadlift first, the rest of the order could be the same. Or if you have a similar priority, you could do a deadlift maybe prior to doing some low back extensions in the workout there as well too. But uh, that's pretty much it, unless you got anything to add? No, do you have any questions for me? I don't know. Well, I already know your last name, so I'm pretty sure we're good. I think I've got everything I need. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got my back, so. Sweet, all right, we're ready to go. Um, as always, you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, feelings? You want a safe space to argue with people, get down there and get at it. Um, and let me know what you guys want to see more of. And as always, you're looking to support the channel, get down in the uh, description down there. We've got links to my app, which is full of epic workouts, programs, one-on-one um, -on -one support from me and my coaches and all that good stuff, as well as there's some t-shirts and all that crap in there as well too. So want to support the channel, get down in there, push some buttons. And uh, as always, see you guys for the next one.